New Year, same old tune. After President Biden used his first campaign speech of 2024 to bash former President Donald Trump, Trump is firing back. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson is in Wilmington, Delaware, where Biden is spending the weekend. Alicia, President Biden gave his first campaign address of 2024, speaking outside Valley Forge, George Washington's winter encampment during the American Revolution. Biden used the occasion to launch a full broadside into his predecessor, saying Donald Trump's name 44 times during the 30-minute address, a record for one of the president's own speeches. The choice is clear. Donald Trump's campaign is about him, not America, not you. Donald Trump's campaign is obsessed with the past, not the future. He's willing to sacrifice our democracy, put himself in power. Donald Trump reacting to the president in a speech earlier in Iowa, saying he's the threat to the country, not him. He's a threat to the, to, he doesn't even know what the word means. He's a threat to democracy. Define democracy, Joe. Uh, our, that's not a fair question. <laughs> He gets up and talks like we're the devil, all of us. I mean, basically, it's MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. He doesn't even know what it, If I said define MAGA, he would have no idea. It's called make America great again. That's all it is. It's nothing sinister. And then there's this mysterious illness to Biden's defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, who's been missing in action all week. Late Friday, the Pentagon said he had been hospitalized Monday following complications from elective surgery, landing him for a time in the ICU. The White House was not informed for three days. The public was left in the dark all week. Many are outraged over the delay. Austin defending himself in a new statement saying, quote, I could have done a better job ensuring the public was appropriately informed. I commit to doing better. But this is important to say. This was my medical procedure, and I take full responsibility for my decisions about disclosure. Secretary Austin also did not disclose what landed him in the hospital to begin with. Alicia. Lucas Tomlinson, thank you so much. You know, Guy, I want to go to you on this really quickly because it's just so striking when you consider what is going on in the Middle East right now, everything going on in the world. And not only did we didn't know, there were so many people in the administration who didn't know. This is crazy, right? So we all wish the secretary well and a full recovery and all of that. But you had the top military leader in America not just in the hospital, but in intensive care for a time. Mm -hmm. And in that statement, he said, I could have done a better job ensuring the public was appropriately informed. The reports are he didn't even inform the National Security Advisor or the President of the United States for days. On top of that, it's not like, oh, it slipped my mind. There are reports that they were telling people that he was working from home at the time. That would be a lie. Yep. That is not a bad job of communicating. That is a cover-up. Mm-hmm. This is absolutely unacceptable. This is not the end of this story. No, absolutely. I completely agree. Well, meantime, former President Obama is back to help Biden in his re-election bid. The Washington Post reporting Obama and Biden met at the White House to talk about taking down Trump. The article reads, Obama is, quote, discussing the matter directly with Biden and telling the president's aides and allies that The campaign needs to be empowered to make decisions without clearing them with the White House. Jimmy, I'm going to go to you first. Uh, The Washington Post piece went into great detail Mm -hmm. about what Obama did in 2012. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line was um, they were agile. And that's what he respects. But if if you think about the larger persona of these two men, Obama versus Biden, you don't think about agility, really, with with, the voters don't. I mean, I'm not just trying to be funny here, but like the voters, like they're worried about it. But Obama can only do so much. He cannot make the president younger. No, I mean, that's going to (laughs) be, that's a big issue. The problem Obama has is the same problem every Biden surrogate has, okay? Selling America on another four years of this administration is like selling cruise getaways to people who just watched Titanic. You know what I mean? As everyone's bobbing in the ocean, you're like, hey, maybe I don't want to do this again. Uh, They have no deliverable. When you hear Donald Trump's name 44 times in a speech, it means you yourself have no deliverable from your administration. Because anything the Democrats have achieved resides in a neighborhood nobody cares about. Oh, great, you spent more money on climate change than any time in history. Nobody asked for that. Never mind that it was under the guise of inflation reduction when they did it. And the reason we're going to buckle up right now, for real, okay, is because if you truly care about the conditions in this country, okay, which I don't believe they do, 
this is about to be the most divisive nine months of our lives because they laid out the groundwork here. Mm -hmm. Hey, we need to win re-election. The only way we're going to do it is by yelling Trump is Hitler every day till November. And it's very divisive. It's disgusting. People always say it's the most important election of our lifetime. That's a fraud. It's like calling a movie mission impossible. They've had eight of them. They're not impossible. But, but it is going to be the most divisive. But I, at least I saved something for you. Yes, yeah, okay. I know All you right. got something to say, but you got to li yep. listen to this and read this because Maureen Dowd of the New York Times wrote an op-ed. The headline, Is Trump Hell? In, in the article, it reads, as the voting to determine the next president gets underway, it is clear that the tyrannical Trump won't be easily conquered, and that is our hell. The president must continue to be aggressive in convincing people he's the best alternative, that at 81, he's not too old for the job, that he has solutions to stop the chaos on the border and relentless death in Gaza. You do your job, Mr. President, and we'll do ours. She also really went after the media and Fox News. Shocker. But, yeah. But to the, the point of that and to what Jimmy said, nobody's trying... Joe Biden and his surrogates, they're not trying to convince America of their agenda. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to tell you the other side is yep. worse. And if you watch the speech that Joe Biden gave, all this threat to democracy stuff, that's what he's trying to do. You know, my little brother, when he was much younger and he didn't want to eat his vegetables, he would tell my mom, look at the trees, mommy, because he was trying to distract my mom from what she wanted him to do. And that's what Joe Biden's doing. He's saying, OK, I'm terrible. I'm upside down on the border. I'm upside down on the economy. Nothing's going right. But look over here. You know, this guy is worse. Republicans are worse. They're a bigger threat to our country. And that's the strategy. Will it work? I don't know. We're so hardened as a country now. People are so dug in on their sides. There's less persuadable voters. So, I, you know, I don't know. But that's the strategy. It's not to convince anyone of his agenda. It's just the other side is worse. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.